Today we're walking in another new area that we haven't really walked in before, sort of. This is in North Bay Village and it's in like the horseshoe shape part of the island on East Drive. And the reason we're actually over here today is because of this building right behind me. You see, this condo was the latest building to get its mandatory evacuation order because the place has been deemed unsafe. So. This whole building right here has to go through its 60 year recertification because it's pretty old. And everybody that lives here has been ordered that they have to leave by no later than Tuesday. Today when I'm shooting this, it is Friday, April 21st. So people have until Tuesday next week to leave this building. Just, just like that, guys. Pretty much overnight, you're like, yeah, gotta go. And uh, where do you go, you know? They're telling people to live with family, to stay with friends or, or whatever until it's safe to come back. And uh, otherwise you're gonna have to look into some of the homeless shelters or things like that. So it's pretty messed up what's happening to the people that live here in this building. Now the way that this actually happened is because when we had all this rain about a week and a half ago, we got dumped with a ton of rain here in South Florida, which you guys saw in some of my videos. And it created some problems with the roof here and what happened was they had a bunch of damage, somebody made a report, and then after they came out to investigate it, it ended up causing another red flag, deeming the whole place to be safe to live in. So that's a big problem for people here. So I actually just spoke to the president of this building, the condo president. She caught me outside here and we talked for a little while. At first she thought I was with the news and I told her no, I have a YouTube channel covering condos today all the different problems that are happening with that so she talked to me but um, she asked me not to put her segment in the video so i'm going to be a stand-up guy and i'm not going to do that but i am going to tell you that with my conversation with her why this happened guys is because of 30 years of deferred maintenance and this is kind of a coincidence starting the video off with this story because before this happened i found information about this lending blacklist that uh, Fannie Mae has put together where they're not lending or giving any sort of mortgages in certain buildings across the country. And this list is not actually available to the public. But before we get into that, I think places like this are gonna end up making it onto that list, maybe even after they meet the compliance that they're supposed to, because these guys had 30 years of deferred maintenance in the building. If anybody wants to go buy a place here in the future, they, they, they might be on the blacklist saying, no, we're not giving a loan here because we don't know the status of the building. Now you would think because we have so many issues with the condos here in Florida, that this would be a Florida story. When in fact, the big feature of this actually is in California. There was a building in Anaheim, California. It's called Harbor Lofts Condominium in downtown Anaheim. And people there are not able to get financing for this property. And some owners that own properties here found this out the hard way when they went to go sell their condo and the buyers tried to get the loan. And no one found out about this until the last minute, few days before closing, and the loan got denied. Because apparently this building is on this Fannie Mae blacklist of condos not to lend in. Now here's some of the reasons why a condo might end up on this Fannie Mae blacklist. It could be things like construction defects, litigation between the owners and the builder, and even things like the HOA not having sufficient insurance. There was another place in California called Laguna Hills Village, and there are about 6,100 condos in this complex, and they recently found out that their building is on this no lending blacklist as well. And here's the messed up part. This blacklist that Fannie Mae has, this is not public information. They only have this info available to lenders and mortgage servicers at the moment. And the worst part is, if you get put on this list, you don't even know why. They don't tell you what's going on, why you're on this blacklist. It's just, surprise, no more loans available to you. And that's about it. So the thing that sucks about this the most as a buyer of a condo or even the seller is you have no idea if your complex or building is on this list until you actually go to sell the place if you're a seller 
or you're trying to buy the place and then the loan ends up getting denied. And right now there's about 1400 properties or condo complexes on this list. And this affects existing owners too. Even if you don't wanna sell the place, say you want to refinance, right? Well, in the case like that, you would end up having to pay about two and a half percentage points more in interest, which would translate to about $769 per month more in order to refinance a property that's on this list. So what this does is it eliminates people from buying these properties unless you're a cash buyer or you're willing to pay a higher interest rate loan, something that's not a conventional loan from a lender that will still finance you. So basically, if you live in a building like the one at the beginning of this video that has you know, significant deferred maintenance or there's no reserves, things like that, then chances are your complex can end up on this list. When you eliminate regular buyers from a property like this, this is very likely to tank the real estate values in these complexes. And listen to this, lenders who sell their mortgages to Fannie and Freddie Mae are also expected to take a deeper dive into the condo documents, reviewing six months of HOA meeting minutes and examining inspection and engineering reports from the past five years. So all of this is supposedly there to help protect buyers from physically and financially unsafe buildings. And you know, here's what's messed up. When they asked Fannie Mae why this list is private, they declined to comment. So they're trying to protect people, right? They're trying to protect people from physically and financially unsafe buildings. But if they're trying to protect people, why isn't this public information? Because this should be easily available for anyone looking to buy one of these properties to save a ton of time up front. I mean, why waste time going around and looking at dozens of different properties or if you're looking to buy a condo only to find out when you make an offer on one, it's not eligible and you can't buy it. So this is just kind of ridiculous. You know, they're doing all these ridiculous things trying to help low income borrowers and punish people with good credit and all these things and simultaneously making it secretive and hard for people to understand what they're even eligible to buy to begin with. So. Nothing but financial shenanigans with our government right now. And imagine also, if you're in one of these buildings that's on this list, well, because you don't know why you're on the list, there's no way to know what you need to do to bring your building up to code or up to compliance to get off this list because they're not sharing this information with people. So to me, this is basically a criminal act. just like this whole new rule that they're implementing with mortgages, you know, punishing good credit buyers. I mean, this whole thing is becoming a complete joke right now. So now attorneys that represent these condos and HOAs are telling the managers there not to fill out the condo questionnaires that they're given by the lenders anymore in case they end up giving the wrong information by mistake. It puts the building at it had legal risk, okay, because of giving false information, even if you didn't know it wasn't false. And it can also end you up on this list. But at the same time, you know, when you are buying a condo and your lender requests the condo questionnaire, if the condo questionnaire is not filled out, then chances are the lender is gonna deny the loan anyway. So there's really no way around this, but at least the building won't end up on this list if you know, the managers aren't filling out the condo questionnaires. It's also gonna make sure that most sales completely fall through, unless of course it's a cash transaction. So what happened with this couple in California when they were trying to sell this property, they actually ended up having to extend the contract, okay? They had to stay in escrow longer because they couldn't close the place right away. And they ended up giving the buyer a $15,000 concession to make up for the additional costs once they actually found a new lender who would finance it. So you can get financing for these places, but it's not gonna be through the conventional financing routes that are offered through Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. See, check this out, guys. I'm walking by the Shell station over here, still no gas. Places started running out of gas like on Sunday or Monday, something like that. Today's Friday and I'm shooting this, although I do see more stations have gas now. This is the first one I saw today that didn't, so. Now anybody that doesn't wanna admit that the housing market is coming down is not paying attention to the facts right now because Redfin just released a report talking about how 
the median home prices now are down 3.3% year over year according to their data. And guess what? This 3.3% drop year over year is the biggest drop that we've seen since 2012. I thought it was gonna say 2008, but it's pretty close, 2012. Now Redfin is saying this is due to a big drop off in home buyers, and that's why the prices are coming down. Now you see mortgage rates starting to tick back up again. You know, this is what I've been saying to people for a long time, is that the mortgage rates are gonna to continue to fluctuate throughout the year, but don't expect them to come down anywhere near to where they were before, and they're still hovering in the mid sixes for a lot of people. I think one of the main issues that we might see for a while still is artificially low inventory simply because so many sellers are locked in right now. In fact, there was a recent survey from Realtor.com and they said that three quarters of the home sellers said that they feel locked into their current home because of low mortgage rates. And half of them said that they plan to wait until rates come down before selling. So it's like, okay, where do rates need to come down to in order for people to start thinking about selling? right? My guess is probably somewhere under 5% and we might not see that for years. But you have less sellers and you also have less buyers because the interest rates are too high. These two things do sort of balance out the housing market. And this is the interesting thing that I keep thinking about when I read stuff like this, kind of getting a glimpse into sellers' mentalities. For example, if a lot of people are waiting for rates to come down to list, probably so they can go ahead and buy something else themselves, they're not probably gonna be listing their homes for sale unless a couple things happen. One, they get into a forced sale situation where they have to sell for whatever reason, you know, divorce, death, job loss, whatever, the typical reasons people end up needing to sell even though they weren't planning on it. But the people that are selling their homes willingly are gonna be likely listing their homes when the market is really coming down. Because if interest rates are going down, that means the Fed has likely already pivoted and maybe even started to reverse their interest rates and mortgage rates will then start following and coming down as well. And so when are you gonna see all this inventory? Probably all at the same time when the housing market is just coming down and if you don't think that there's something that can cause a crash, well, a bunch of inventory coming on the online at the same time can easily cause a crash. And the interesting thing is, is these sellers are gonna have a new problem to face whenever interest rates are coming down, is, oh great, well, interest rates are coming down, now you can sell your house and buy a new one, but chances are, they're gonna be selling that house for less money because if prices are already down year over year with high interest rates, when interest rates start to come down, that kind of marks the beginning of the recession, officially anyways. Well, what kind of effect do you think the recession is gonna have on home prices? This definitely is one of the most bizarre and interesting housing markets I've ever seen. There's so many things that can change the direction of all of this that we're covering here, but people can no longer say that the housing market is not coming down, guys, because we have year over year proof that it is, and it's not by 0.1% or anything ridiculous like that. This is a 3.3% decline year over year. So we have to keep an eye on these numbers and see where it goes for the rest of the year and see if it does keep going down. Now, people are always asking me what I think is gonna happen with home prices here in Florida, and even more specifically, Miami. You know, why hasn't it crashed here yet? Because the prices have gotten so far out of whack over the past few years. And here's a little more insight into why this probably hasn't happened yet. There was a report from Axios recently, and they found out that three out of the five cities in the United States that have the lowest unemployment rates are right here in Florida. And, you know, people always like to complain about the job market here, that you make less money than you do in other states. And, um, you know, the cost of living is too much for what people earn. However, the unemployment rate here is some of the lowest. In fact, Miami, right here, is right at the top of the list at only a 2.2% unemployment rate. Followed by that, you got Minneapolis, Minnesota, 2.4%, Tampa, Florida at 2.5%, then you got Indianapolis, Indiana at 2.6% and Orlando, Florida at 2.6%. 
So those are the three biggest metros here in Florida. In general, you got Orlando, Tampa, and Miami. The only one missing from that list is Jacksonville. If you notice, Jacksonville's housing market is starting to suffer a lot more than these other areas, for example, likely because their local economy is not doing as good as Tampa, Orlando, and Miami. Florida is facing, you know, massive amounts of problems. You know, we just talked about all this condo stuff, and that is beyond, you know, what is actually happening here in Florida in terms of the new rules that we have and the strictness in terms of keeping condos safe. You know, that's a headwind facing the condo market here. We have the ballooning insurance premiums that are completely out of control, like we talked about earlier in the week. And we also have the rising property taxes for people that are sometimes doubling or tripling when they buy a property. So you have all these headwinds facing the Florida housing market. And to me, guys, the only thing that's holding this up right now is just the sheer amount of people pouring in here. If we didn't have this massive amount of inward migration, the Florida housing market would already be crashing. That's my thoughts on it. So what I think we need to look for over the course of the next couple of years is will Florida's migration slow down? It, are all these problems that we're facing going to be enough to scare people away and not come here? That's gonna be the number one catalyst that's gonna be able to bring the market down here because then you're taking away the demand that we currently have that's maintaining these ridiculous prices that we have throughout most of the state. So to me, it all relies on that. And I think as the economy gets worse, more people will decide to stay put. They might not be relocating to Florida. And because of this recession and inflation, they also might decide not to come here anymore either because it's just too expensive and they thought they might be able to save money. And after looking at it again, turns out that they actually can't. We also have a lot of people that own second homes here in Florida. And so if the recession gets bad, people start losing a lot of money in their stock portfolios, get laid off, things like that. People might be selling these second homes because that's the first place to go versus selling their primary residence. And you might see a lot of these places hit the market if things get bad enough, but that is yet to be seen. Now for once, we got an email from the Fairway Mortgage Company telling the truth about something. Listen to what they said this time. Tip of the week, beware. There is no new 40-year FHA mortgage. All of the news you hear about this is incorrect. The only change that the FHA is allowed to do loan modifications for distressed borrowers who already have existing FHA loans. They can extend the loan to a 40-year term to make it more affordable. This is not a loan a buyer would obtain, only an existing FHA borrower that might end up in foreclosure. So finally, refreshingly, we have a piece of real information from this place that's not trying to FOMO people into the market. And I'm sure they probably got a lot of calls for people looking to get these 40-year FHA mortgages because it is slightly cheaper. And uh, that's probably what prompted them to write this. And yeah, guys, if they tell you that anybody can go out and get a 40-year FHA mortgage, it's fake news, it's not true, okay? Like they said, they can still modify people's loans in order to get struggling borrowers into a 40-year mortgage away from the 30-year term. And we talked about this a few weeks ago when this was first announced. And it's another, just another thing that's delaying the inevitable, like we talked about, you know, saving people $150 or $200 a month on the mortgage is not going to be enough in most cases in order to stop people from going into foreclosure. And at the end of the day, you're going to be saddling them with way more debt than they would have had with the 30-year loan and it's just gonna make people who don't have the money go even further into debt and have to pay more so you know once again another one of these sham government programs like everything else we're talking about here it's all a scam guys you know this 40-year fha thing it's a scam this whole new thing where they're charging people that have good credit more money in order to subsidize low income low credit borrowers it's a scam you know, the student loan forgiveness where they're going to give taxpayer money to people that, you know, spent too much on student loans, it's a scam. Like it's all robbing Peter to pay Paul and it's kind of like this dangerous move towards socialism, which I'm sure a lot of people aren't happy with. Except for the ones receiving these benefits, of course, they're probably thrilled about all of this because, you know, they're reaping these benefits off the backs of other people's hard work. It's going to be interesting to see 
when the next election cycle takes place. However that turns out, if things are going to turn around and change direction, uh, we'll see, right? If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you click the bell notification down below. YouTube will alert you every time I post a new video. And if you don't wanna wait, check out my next one on the screen right over here and I'll see you in the next one.